I have three principles when it comes to um, how I think about dietary principles, because we get very caught up in, in eating keto or intermittent fasting or autoimmune paleo. My three principles are easy. Principle number one is fat, fiber, protein at every meal. That's going to help mm-hmm. with your blood sugar right there. Fat, fiber, protein at every meal. If you don't know which fats, which fibers, which proteins, that's where you can spend your time getting some information. You don't have to be researching, do I need to eat this diet or that diet or follow that protocol that my sister or my cousin is on? Fat, fiber, protein. I've got articles on the Functional Nutrition Alliance page about each of those. My second principle is eat the rainbow. And right there, if you eat the rainbow rich foods, you're going to get more fiber that helps your fat fiber protein quotient every single meal. And my third principle is know your yes, no, maybe list. So Eileen, if I ask you what foods make you feel great and do you know of any foods that don't make you feel so good, you probably know some. Yeah. Yeah. Anything come to mind for you? Oh, like what makes me feel great? Like fruits. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Fruits make you feel great. Yeah. What makes me not feel good? Like, hmm. I would say like if I eat too much pasta or something. Yeah. Or like anything too heavy or creamy. There you go. Yeah. So knowing those things about yourself and what we start to do is we take back some of the agency around what we're listening to, because there's a lot of noise out there around nutrition. And instead of listening to the noise, we start to listen in and play a little bit. Fat, fiber, protein, what does that mean? What am I eating? I'm eating an apple. What did I get? I got fiber. Where is my fat? Where's my protein? Should I put some nut butter on my apple? Can I eat cheese? Do I put cheese with my apple and eat that? Did you start to think through how do I put these things together? And blood sugar is at the base of our hormone balance. So anything we're experiencing with hormones, if you think fat, fiber, protein, you're actually helping yourself. Sleep and poop are also going to help your hormones. <laughs> like there's, yeah. it comes, It's so simple and yet we want to come. And then you said that was the basic tier. Non-negotiable trifecta is the, yeah, those are the non-negotiables, tier one. It, can you tell us a little about, about tier two or tier three? So tier two is what I call deficiency to sufficiency. This, from a practitioner perspective, may be a deficiency in a nutrient. So I may look at your labs and see that you're nu- deficient in iron or vitamin D, or with your hormones, you may be deficient in a certain hormone, or you may be toxic, which is the other level. You know, we have deficiency to sufficiency to oversufficiency, right? So there's a spectrum there, and we're always looking to find that balance. And I'm not talking about testing necessarily. It really can just be in things like joy, sleep, Mm. fun, laughter, when we think personally about deficiency to sufficiency, what do we love that we're not getting enough of in our lives? And how do we bring that into a little bit more sufficiency? So non-negotiables, and those include what we know for ourselves, as well as the non-negotiable trifecta, deficiency to sufficiency. With each of us, we can start with saying, do I have a deficiency in greens or do I have a deficiency in colors or do I have a deficiency in sleep? We don't have to think about like vitamin D and iron. Dismantling the dysfunction tier three is where we tend to jump. That's what medicine does. And what I'm saying is that when we focus on tier one and tier two, it's another way in to dismantle the dysfunction as opposed to trying to go for the dysfunction head on. Yep. Let medicine do that, but we don't have to do that. Right, right. That makes sense. Like start with the basics, get the basics right. Okay. So I also love that you bring in this element of something outside of just food and nutrition, right? This element of joy, what makes you happy, things you love. Can you talk more about that and how that influences our health? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that's such an important point. And if you look at all my systems, they include mindset or stress and resilience or community and relationships. And I truly believe that nutrition is about growth, metabolism and repair. And growth, metabolism, repair go beyond the food that we put in our body. It's really about sleep. It's about relationships. It's about the resilience that we build, which comes from a number of different factors. And things like joy and purpose and passion, these are what are called positive psychological constructs or PPCs. And there's so much research that shows the influence that these PPCs have on our underlying health. So again, I think when we're stuck, when I say sympathetic dominance, state, that's a fight or flight state. Where am I broken? Where do I need to be fixed? What's going on? When we focus on the parasympathetic, that's rest and digest. I am good. I am fine. I have this thing I'm working on. I nourish myself with joy and pleasure and laughter and all the things that help me to be more of myself as opposed to being stuck in this I'm broken mentality that a lot of people who are experiencing chronic health challenges can can get stuck in. Let's get a little bit more practical. Like, Are there any actionable steps that you can share today related to functional nutrition that we can start applying for our health? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, I think this is really about taking back our agency And when we're giving it away to social media, to all the recommendations, we lose our agency. So again, just I just want to anchor fat fiber protein is something we can do today. Like just start thinking about every time you eat and tune into how you feel. If you're able to keep what I call a food, mood, and poop journal, that's an actionable step. And when I say mood, I don't just mean our mental health mood. I mean any sign or symptom we're experiencing. So if you can take three days and say, I'm going to track my food, not measure it, just what did I eat or not eat, my mood in quotation marks. So how do I feel? How does my body feel? And my poop, and you can get something called a Bristol stool chart and give it a number so you don't have to write details about your poop, but just see what it looks like before you flush. If you can start tracking and looking inward as opposed to looking outward, you become a better agent for yourself. I'm not asking you to diagnose, but you show up to your providers with more information and you start to see, let me play now. I'm going to take one meal. This is how I felt for three days. Does anything change if I eat eggs and toast with avocado one day, or if I drink a smoothie another day, or if I skip breakfast? Do any of the things in the mood category change? So what I'm asking people to do as an actionable step isn't to eat flax seeds or put collagen in their coffee. It's think more broadly, get more playful And track what's happening for you because, Eileen, what works for you isn't going to be what works for me. This is where we really embrace bio-individuality. And the only way to get there is by tuning in. So my actionable step is going to be, if you're able and it's not triggering in any way, start with a food, mood, poop journal and see how am I doing? How am I feeling? What symptoms are coming up? And then instead of looking at it all crazy, trying to fix everything, you start to play and get a little bit more tactical in each and every step. And again, if we're thinking about what we're eating, three principles, fat, fiber, protein, eat the rainbow, and know your yes, no, maybe list and play. start that play, play from there. 